الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا عبده ونبيه ورسوله All praise and glory belongs to Allah alone and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon the one after whom there is no prophet We testify that no one is worthy of worship with Allah alone without any partners and that the Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him was indeed his servant and his prophet and his messenger We continue insha'Allah by Allah's permission with the fundamentals of faith or the pillars of Iman and we move on, insha'Allah, to the second pillar of faith. This is belief in the angels. What does it mean to believe in the angels? And what are the angels? And what is the benefit of believing in these angels? These, insha'Allah, will be the three uh, points we revolve these few next minutes, next few minutes, insha'Allah, upon. Firstly, angels in Arabic, or the hadith mentions, to believe in the malaika, right? Malaika is the plural of malak. Right? Or Malak. This is an angel. The scholars mention that this comes from the word Aluk or Aluka, which is a message. Why? Because of the most original, most famous duties of the angels, is that they were the messengers of Allah to his messengers on earth. Allah the Most High says in the beginning, first verse in Surah Fatir, Alhamdulillahi Fatir is Samawati wal Ard. جَاعِلِ الْمَلَائِكَةِ رُسُلًا أُولِي أَجْنِحَةٍ مَثْنَى وَثُلَاثَ وَرُبَاعَ Which means, all praise belongs to Allah who originated the heavens and the earth and who made the angels messengers with wings. Two, meaning two wings, and three wings, and four wings. So this was their original job. They brought the message, the revelation to the prophets of Allah and from them the prophets of Allah and their messengers would relay this to the creation for their benefit. Learning about the angels can only be done through the book of Allah and the words of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. There's no logic involved, right? Because this is of the matters of the unseen, things we haven't seen with our eyes. So we are not allowed to believe or claim anything about the unseen except that which we have been given knowledge about. So when we look through the Qur'an and the Sunnah, the tradition of our Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, what do we find about the angels? What do we learn about them? Some of their qualities. Number one, they were created from light. In Sayyid Muslim, the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, he said that indeed the angels were created from light. This doesn't necessitate, by the way, that they are still light. The same way you were created from mud doesn't mean if you go to the ocean, you're going to wither away and dissolve, right? The angels were created from light. And the jinn, another creation that has a will like us, the jinn were created from a flame, a smokeless fire. The hadith continues and says, and the human being was created from that which has been described to you, meaning all throughout the Quran. So they were created from lights. The angels are immense in number. The hadith in Bukhari and Muslim of Malik ibn Sa'sa'ah, may Allah be pleased with him, he mentioned that the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, presented to them all the many scenes he encountered on the night journey and the ascension through the heavens, Al-Mi'raj. He says, and when I reached the seventh heaven, Rufi Ali al Baytul Ma'mur. Al-Baytul Ma'mur was erected in front of me. Al-Baytul Ma'mur is a building that Allah swears by in Surah At-Tur in the Quran that is the Kaaba basically, right, of the heavens. He said, and Jibreel alayhi salam, peace and blessings be upon him, said to me, this is Al-Baytul Ma'mur. Every day, 70,000 angels enter and pray in it. Then they leave and they never return to it for as long as time goes on. Meaning every single day, 70,000 brand new angels go and pray in Al Baytul Ma'mur. See how, far, how long it's been happening, how long it's going to continue happening. Immense in number, far surpassing the numbers of human beings. And also in Sahih Muslim, from the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, may Allah be pleased with him, he said that the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, said, 
يُؤْتَى بِجَهَنَّمْ The hellfire will be brought forth on the day of judgment. لَهَا سَبْعُونَ أَلْفَ زِمَامْ It will have 70,000 chains, reins, you know the reins of a horse or the chains. It will have 70,000 chains. On every single chain, 70,000 angels يَجُرُّونَهَا Dragging it forward. Meaning the hellfire alone has 70,000 angels on each 70,000 chains, on each chain 70,000 angels. So 4 billion, 900 million angels just to hold the hellfire from being released upon the creation. Rather it was prepared as the punishment of Allah for those that by His justice, it has been determined that they deserve to be punished. Also of the qualities of the angels that we learn from the Quran and the Sunnah is that they are enormous in size. And Imam Ahmad and others, and hadith has been authenticated by many scholars. From the hadith of Jabir, he said that the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, mentioned, أُذِنَ لِي أَنْ أَتَحَدَّثْ It was permitted for me to speak with one of the angels that created the, that, astaghfirullah, it was permitted for me to speak to one of the angels that carry the throne of Allah. Between the flesh of his ear, meaning the soft part, right? that the earrings don't put on this flesh between the shahma, the flesh of the ear and the tip of his shoulder, this angel is the distance of a 700 years travel meaning a man who lives 70 years his lifetime multiplied by 10 him walking or riding for those entire 10 lifetimes this is the distance between the flesh of the ear and the shoulder of that angel enormous in size enormous in number Created from light. Also, we're informed that they carry out various tasks. Jibreel, peace and blessings be upon him, is the archangel who Allah trusts with the revelation to bring it to the messenger. Israfil, alayhi salam. Two different hadith are mentioned about him. One of them mentions that Israfil is of those that carry the throne of Allah, and the second hadith mentions that he is the one that will blow the trumpet to commence the Day of Judgment. Mikael is the angel that has been commissioned with managing the rainfall, the precipitation and the agriculture. Allah the Most High says in the Quran, قُلْ يَتَوَفَّاكُمْ مَلَكُ الْمَوْتِ الَّذِي وُكِّلَ بِكُمْ Say to them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace and blessings be upon him. Say to them that the angel of death will put you to death. He has been appointed over you. And there are other angels there are the angels that sit on a person's right and left, every person. As mentioned Surah Qaf, that record his every deed, his every utterance. The Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, said that there is no person when he lays down to sleep and he recites Ayat al-Kursi, the 255th verse in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum, to the end. No one recites that one verse upon laying in his bed, except that there remains an angel atop his head guarding him, guardian angels, guarding him, until he awakens. Various tasks. Also of the qualities of these angels is that they are incapable of sinning. Allah the Most High says, قُوْ أَنفُسَكُمْ وَأَهْلِيكُمْ نَارًا وَقُودُهَا النَّاسُ وَالْحِجَارًا Guard yourselves and your families from a fire whose fuel is men and stones, humans and stones. عَلَيْهَا مَلَائِكَةٌ غِلَاظٌ شِدَادٌ لَا يَعْصُونَ اللَّهَ مَا أَمَرَهُمْ وَيَفْعَلُونَ مَا يؤمرون. This fire, upon it are angels that are fierce and powerful, that do not disobey Allah and what He commanded them, and they do exactly as they're instructed. Incapable of sinning whatsoever. Also of the qualities of these angels is that they are compassionate with the believers, and they pray for them. This is mentioned in Surah Al-Ghafir, right in the beginning if you go back to it. Beautiful prayers that they make for the believers. And also, the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, informed us that Allah and His angels and all those in the heavens and in the earth, even the whale in the sea or the fish in the sea and even the ants in its hole, they seek forgiveness, angels included. They seek forgiveness for the one that teaches people goodness. So these are of the descriptions of the angels. Let us say now, what's the benefit of believing in the angels? Allah's creation of these malaika, these angels, and our belief in them causes great benefits to sprout in a person's life 
that someone can hardly continue surviving as a believer without. What are some of these lessons and benefits? The first of them is that the creation of the angels is a manifestation, it's a display of Allah's power. Since Allah Himself cannot be seen in this world, right? A person gets to know Allah through His names and His attributes and His actions. So when a person begins to learn about the creation of the angels, these magnificent, abundant, amazing human being uh, creations that are so much more superior to the human beings in those aspects. And then you think about their size. One hadith mentions that the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, sees Jibreel alayhi salam who filled the horizon when he saw him in his true form with his 600 wings. And then all of that, he is just another power little slave of the Almighty King, just another product of the word be, and he is. This is a manifestation of Allah's power that increases the believer in faith and in confidence. Also, the creation of the angels, the scholars mention, is an honor for the believers. The angels worship Allah night and day, they don't quit. يُسَبِّحُونَ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارُ لَا يَفْتُرُونَ Allah says, they praise Him by day and by night, never growing tired. Okay? And they don't sin whatsoever, we covered this. And they're more in number than us, and greater in strength than us, and greater in size than us. And despite all that, the angel can become superior, the human being can become superior to the angel. Go back and review what Ibn Kathir, the famous tafsir scholar, scholar of Quranic interpretation, mentioned in Surah al bayyinah when Allah the Most High said, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ أُولَٰئِكَ هُمْ خَيْرُ الْبَرِيَّةِ Indeed, those that believe and do good deeds, they are the best of creation. Ibn Kathir mentions there that Abu Hurairah, may Allah be pleased with him, the companion and student of the Prophet ﷺ, he said, they are the best of the creation, meaning even better than the angels. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah says, yes indeed, once they are forgiven and they are admitted to paradise, it's even better than the angels. And the reason behind this is obvious. Because the human being can commit sin. So when he chooses to be a believer and fear Allah and love Him and trust Him and obey Him, and he doesn't commit the sin even though he can, this is more praiseworthy than one that cannot commit the sin to begin with. As for us sleeping, eating and drinking, becoming tired, even though the angels don't, Allah is far more merciful, far more perfect than to hold against us something that's outside of our ability. So it's an honor for the believers. Also of the benefits of believing in the angels is that it's a humbling reality. When one reflects on the world of the angels as we've been doing, strength and power and numbers and purity, all that, and in the end all of them do nothing but worship Allah and see it unbefitting to do anything but worship Allah. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, he said that on the day of judgment, they're going to say, glorified you are, O Allah, we didn't worship you enough. We didn't worship you in the manner that you deserve to be worshipped. Person becomes humble and man. Who in the world am I to think that I have the right to disobey Allah or worship other than Allah or put my trust in other than Allah or fear anyone the way I fear Allah? Allah the Most High mentions in the end of Surah Al-A'raf, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ عِنْدَ رَبِّكْ لَا يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِهِ Don't forget, those that are with your Lord, the angels, they are not too proud to worship Him. So you yourself lower your head and humble your heart to worshiping Allah the Most High. Lastly and finally, the existence of the angels and their creation is a manifestation, a display of Allah's wide grace and abundant mercy. How? The scholars say, and I have to read this to you for its beauty. Know that Allah created you and the angels and fused between your lives in a manner that indicates His wonderful mercy and His benevolence, if you only knew. Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, may Allah have mercy on him, he says, and the angels are appointed over the human being from the time he's a drop of sperm until the end of his affair. So he winds up in paradise, right? Or the fire. He says, they are responsible for forming and molding him. Allah sends them in the womb of the mother to form and mold. Carrying him from stage to stage and protecting him throughout within these three layers of darkness. 
writing his provisions, his actions, his lifespan, whether he's going to be prosperous or doomed, and then accompanying him in all his conditions. Then they record his words and his actions, and they safeguard him during his life. Then they grab his soul at death, displaying it before his creator and originator, Allah the Most High. They are also appointed over the instruments of bliss and punishment. I mean, they present the punishment and they present the, the cheer, the delights. They are the fortifiers of the believing slave by Allah's permission. Those that teach him what's beneficial. Those that fight in his defense. They are his guardians in this world and the next. Those that encourage him with good and invite to it. Discourage him from evil and warn from it. Therefore, they are his allies and his supporters. They are his allies and his supporters, his guardians and his teachers, his advisors, his supplicators, those that pray for him, those who seek forgiveness for him and pray for him to be blessed so long as he teaches people good. They bring him glad tidings of Allah's reward in his dreams and at his death and upon his resurrection. They calm him down, they reassure him. They are the ones that disinterest him in this world and arouse his interest in the hereafter. They are the ones that remind him when he forgets and they energize him when he becomes lazy and they keep him firm when he's frightened. This, by the way, is all founded in the words of Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but it was worded in a manner that I didn't want to leave its wording and stitched in a beautiful light by the great scholar Ibn Al-Qayyim Rahimahullah in his famous book, Ighathul Lahfan. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, nashadu an la ilaha illa anta, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk wa sallillahumma ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.